It starts with... And then... Dog. House. Thank you. It comes in two parts, this dog house. One bit drops on like that. Pete, inside, mate. OK. Because the, the thing is, Pete, right, yeah. I know a lot of dogs, right, in my time. I've known lots and lots and lots, and I've never, ever, ever seen a dog house like this. Right, OK, don't move it. I've been. Yeah. The helicopter is now clecoed up to the dog house, so it's time to put on 307 nut plates, which are these little debris here, which will be used to attach the panels to each other. So, a bit of drilling required. Right, with that drilled, I can now actually fix in the nut plate, which goes on the reverse side and held in by a couple of little countersunk pop rivets. And then just give it a big squeeze. There we go. It's nice and flush where the join is. And then the second panel will sit over the top and then a screw, which will be painted body colour, will screw into there like that and screw the two panels together. So that's one down, 306 to go. You want to have a look at it, do you? It does look good, actually. <laughs> it's very, very good indeed. Shall we, Pete? Yep. I think so. Yep. Do you think you deserve it? Yes. OK. So what do you think? It looks fantastic. It does look fantastic. It looks brilliant. It is really taking shape now. Only problem is we now have to take it all off again so we can paint it and put on the blades. Right, the next job is to remove part of the trailing edge of the root end of each blade. I've got to come in four and three quarter inches from the root end along the trailing edge and then up the root end four and three eighths which actually takes me to the edge of the wooden block there join up the two marks, scribe it out there we go and then it's a matter of hacking it off so to hack it off you need a hacksaw Pete? Yes. Hacksaw! Now, quick, go! Here we go. Thank you very much. Right, slight error there where I've sawn it, but no worries because a bit of filing will soon sort it out. Perfect. Next job is to establish a consistent cord line all the way along the blade so you can make a reflex trailing edge template and check each blade from end to end. A more precise method of adjusting the trailing edge is to use a dial indicator mounted on the reflex edge fixture available from the parts department. Yes, I've bought one. Of course I've bought one. You've got to have the gadgets. This is the beauty. You can see the aerofoil shape here, and then it's got all these rollers on it to sit on the blade itself. And then, down here, it's got this little plunger that rests on the trailing edge here and gives you a reading on the gauge. And what I've got to do is all the way along here between every two rivets is measure what the reading is on the gauge and then I've got to bend the trailing edge to make sure that all the way along this gauge doesn't move more than two thousandths of an inch. 26, that is 29, 32. It's so much better having the proper kit, isn't it? You'd be faffing about all day if you were just using a little metal template. The reason that it's important to have this consistent cord line is presumably because if you didn't, you could end up with terrible vibration and put the blade under enormous stress. Right, Pete? Yeah? I want the average of 31, 21, 22, 33, 36, 32, 38, 33, 34, 30, 31, 29, 32, 31, 27, 28, 35, 36, 27, 29, 32, 26. 32. 32 is what we're going for then. 
32 thou precisely. For some reason, some of these are much harder to bend than others. 32. 34. No, no, no! Pete! What? I need a stiff drink. Okay. What's it say? I'm got my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> Which way does it take it? Up or down? Just leave it alone. Le leave, leave. Look now, look what you've done. You've clamped Ooh. it over oh, there no. to the. Get Oh! <laughs> Fighting no count. Just getting in a bit of a mood with this now. But I'll be fine. 34. Will become 32. It goes a little tad away like that. This will be 32 now. And it's 28. Oh! Right, nobody touch this blade, it's sorted. I've lost a lot of hair over this. Now, the next job is to sort out the pitch horns, which I have to cut out of this piece of aluminium. Now, you'll notice on here that they are labelled, look. It's M for master and S for slave. Two different blades, you use one, the master blade, which you kind of use as your fixed point, and then when you're doing adjustments, you adjust the slave. There we go, a few rough edges, but I'll sort those out with a sander. The bandsaw's done quite a good job, actually, but at the corners, it's very difficult to get it round the radius, so you can see here the line that I've got to come back to, so I need to sand off these sharp corners, but also on these flats, even though it's a pretty straight line I've cut, surprisingly. Um, it's very, very ridged and grooved, and that needs to be all sanded back flat. Now, next job is to sort out the blade straps. There's a top and bottom one that needs a bit of scuffing on it, because that's where the glue is going to bond it to the wooden block on the root end. And to scuff it up requires a little bit of tickling. There we go. All tickled up nicely. The blade straps themselves will be bonded into that position, something like that. But I've got to put on a couple of bits first and assemble them on the bench. And I've got to get this all the right way around and it's a little bit confusing. Hold it, sit on the edge of your sofa now because this plan is going to make it all crystal clear. There we go. Right, so I've just got to work out how this all goes together. The whole point is, you see, you've got to think about this when you're doing it, because you are the builder, you are the engineer. So if you can't work it out, then maybe you shouldn't be building one. <laughs> it's an epoxy adhesive that's going to glue these straps onto the wood and you need three parts of part A, two, one part of part B. Just do it by eye. But you can see you don't actually need that much because it's going to be a fairly thin film that's underneath each of those straps and on top of the wooden block. And yes, a very critical part of your helicopter is held together with glue. need to spread this adhesive quite thinly so you can still see the wood underneath it. And obviously it's not just the adhesive that's holding your blades onto your helicopter because obviously it is all bolted on as well. But it just adds a bit of extra strength. Now it's a case of just sliding it over the wooden blocks, like so, and try not to scrape off too much 
of the adhesive and it just glides on which is nice and just before it's on fully just need to clear off any of the adhesive that might get stuck to this locator block and I need to locate it with one bolt I need to make sure that it doesn't push the plates off on the other side Okay, that's that, and now 